Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're giving an update. I say we. I've started this video off with we like five times. Today I am giving you an update on my research into electrogravitics and um, I, I've kind of, I'm struggling to finalize my latest prototype into something that I can test. So I'm going to walk through it a little bit and then I'm going to ask you guys if you have any suggestions. So first of all we have this center, well this isn't the center, this is the middle electrode uh, which is the control grid and it is a spider-like structure with little nubs and it's designed to have fine wire wound in, into this shape and it, uh, it provides some support so that the control grid isn't waving around like my last prototype. And then underneath that um, we have these, underneath and above, we have these hollow sections of a hyperbolic funnel which um, allow for the separation to be consistent between the um, three electrodes as well as uh, allowing a hollow space to put a, a shaped solid dielectric, which is uh, superior to air. My last prototype just used air as a dielectric. This, this is superior, according to Thomas Townsend Brown, for producing force. So we're going to use a solid dielectric this time. This is the centermost electrode, which is uh, the spher spherical electrode. It needs to be coated in a conductor. And it's a very particular diameter, so it's not something I could just buy. Uh, you know, I can't just buy a, a copper ball of this diameter, so I need to electroplate the 3D print. And it has a little nub to attach a, uh, a wire to my power source. And then there's the large uh, canopy electrode here, which is double arcuate shape, unlike the single arcuate prototype I had last time. And this uh, just kind of slides right into the, uh, the center of that. Once it's in there, the camera kind of has a hard time picking it up because it's all black. But um, that's kind of how the prototype comes together. And one of the issues I'm having with this prototype, with finalizing it and um, testing it, is that this is a very large curved shape, very difficult shape to to have coded in uh, a conductor, especially with any degree of uniformity. Um, so I would have electroplated, like my last prototype was electroplated. This one's not really ideal for trying that on uh, because it's so big and the because it's kind of this, uh, well, it's kind of a mix between a smooth and a curved surface and that gives different distributions of copper thickness when I electroplate it. So I was thinking about cutting slivers, like uh, if you had this like a pizza and you cut a slice from the center outwards, uh, to take a piece of copper from a sheet and cut that out and lay them next to each other and then solder a wire to connect them all. Um, the downside of that is uh, uniformity would be, would be, you know, it would take a hit. It's very hard to have any sort of uniformity because even one little, uh, corner edge will cause some arcing to to the control grid you know when these are put next to each other and charged to a high voltage because there is still air separating the control grid and this outside of that central uh, solid dielectric pylon um, and also another thing is this is quite heavy you know it's not super heavy I'd say maybe two three pounds um, but that's a lot considering all this is is the shape that I want the upper conductor to be. Uh, I don't need all this heavy plastic 3D print here. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna have to figure out uh, maybe paper mache uh, the center and then electro coat each piece of that in small, uh, you know, pieces. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, I'd be happy to hear them, but that's where my prototype sits now. Uh, in the future, I'm gonna be doing some videos on Thomas Townsend Brown's theory behind these things, how I kind of finalized on this design, and um, you know, steps along the way of making this into something that can be tested, such as choice of the dielectric material that I put in there, um, you know, how I wind the control grid. All of these things kind of need to be. Uh, well, they haven't really been documented that well. 
uh, the actual specifics. So a lot of the specifics that you need when you're actually 3D printing, you know, you need to have it all planned out. Um, I've had to do based on the theory uh, that Thomas Townsend Brown presents. And so we're going to be just kind of breaking that down and as I go along in the construction of this. And then when we test it, we'll talk about where I may have gone wrong, you know, and how we can move forward better. Because ultimately, that's what this is designed to do, is to be better than the last prototype. And then hopefully our next one is better than this. And it's all part of the journey um, when it comes to this kind of stuff. But I'm super stoked about it, super passionate about it. And I'm really happy you guys are enjoying um, these videos and coming along with me on the journey. So thank you for your support. Uh, if you have any ideas for how I can make this prototype, please let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching.